And the next one I'm gonna do is called Time for Change. Um, I wrote this in 2016 at the beginning of the Colin Kaepernick thing before, you know, it took center stage, like I was watching it on TV and I was like, this, this is interesting. And this is what, um, this is what came to mind. So, time for change. It's time for change. There are lessons that I see. It's time for change. There is blood in the streets. It's time for change because I did it by my knee. I am martyred. The only change that we will see is the change that we affect. So it's time to not just protest in the streets, but become part of our legislature. It's time to change laws and actions, rules and determinations, and tell people what is and what is not, what will be acceptable and never can be. Yes, it's time for change. It's time to stop crying over the body of your dead loved one as, it's, as it is displayed as a trophy in the streets. It's time to tell your children who they are, where they come from, what their ancestors have been through and survived and still surviving. It's time for you to write a book. It's time for you to start a show. Yes, it's time for you to take that child by the hand and say, I'm going to stand in the gap as your daddy today, as your mother today. I am going to help the person who is raising you. I am going to be part of that village that makes you great. I am going to push you. Yes, it's time to change because the me's and the eyes are unaffordable and the me's and the eyes are unacceptable they, and they're getting us killed. That ain't me, I'm not a part of that. No, but it's you because they paint you with a broad stroke and one brush and make no difference between you. So whether you be rich or poor, classy or have no cool, who cares because they don't. We are all one and the same, and the sooner we realize this, the sooner there will be change. If you haven't liked us already, we're Ten Cole, and that's the number 10, C-O-L-E. So go on to Facebook and like us, and you'll be able to see all of our events that we have coming up in the future. Thank you so much, and I'll let you guys go fiber because of them we can. Um, we have some people here right now, so I just wanted to kind of give the rundown. Um, if you haven't already, take stock of the beautiful wall and the hanging pictures and all of these um, lovely people that we all love and know are from right here in Alabama. So that's really exciting to me. Um, we want to thank all of you for coming. We have an exciting um, day planned. We're going to have some food that Chef Alan Noble is making. Day planned. We're going to have some food that Chef Alan Noble is making and cooking up for us right now. Uh, we have drinks in the back uh, provided by Straight to Ale. Um, we have doorway closet classics over there. They do wonderful centerpieces and corsages and she's displaying her work so stop by and talk to her. Um, we're going to have later um, some great poetry. We have four amazing poets who also have Calvin Wooten who's going to be presenting his documentary and doing a Q&A um, about it called This Train. Um, then we also have Duran Isabel who will also be here speaking about his new biopic coming up, Buffalo Soldiers. So this is going to be an exciting event. And if you haven't got a chance to do this yet, if you look at this. Haunting man. Eyes are saucer. Yes, sir, boss, sir. Dice are clicking. Rays are flicking. The Nis froze him in a dance. And this never had a chance. We've been seeing the movies and we celebrate and call each other kings and queens. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I want you to know that I came from cotton pickers and maids and, and domestic, other domestic workers. And there's nothing wrong with that because those are still warriors too. And I think that when we forget struggle, we forget how that has shaped us. And this is called an old friend. As if they don't hold value. And when it's time to find them, why are they missing from the news? 
as if they don't outweigh a celebrity breakup or a royal baby who wasn't even born here. Why? Why aren't we more outraged when little black boys are murdered and dismissed by a system that was not meant to protect nor serve them, but we were angry? We were angry when people didn't black out their profile pictures. I wear my black 360. No more fighting over who goes to be in the big house. All the black folks go to the big house. You better start fighting for your babies. You better start fighting for your children. In the end, we will not remember the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends, Martin Luther King Jr. And unfortunately, I don't hear some of you. Thank you. What disasters have you mastered that should have exasperated and aggravated you, but instead you activated a part of you that not only overcame the struggle, but became an advocate for it? I'm not dealing with the nonsense movement. How are you so captivating? How do you smile in the face of misogyny? How are you not praised more for the genealogy of your psychology? My mama didn't raise no fool. Which is why I want you to have my daughter and teacher. You asked me one time why I kissed your feet. And I never responded, so I'll do it in front of this audience. It's because I worship the ground that you walk on. You are regal. You are queen. You are too good for me. So I'll focus every fiber of my being to serving you daily as a reminder to myself that I don't deserve you. Never questioning who or what you are to me because baby, without you, poetry is pointless because you indeed are art to me. And that's never a question. Thank you. I just want to really quickly again thank our sponsors, Google Fiber. They, um, they know how to come through for the culture. So give it up for Google Fiber today. Okay. So I'm not quite exactly sure how this goes. Um, but I do want to say, uh, let's give a, I guess a snap of a round of applause to the, to the poets that were born today. Yes, I probably won't do it again. <laughs> I encourage everybody else that wants to do it, I'm to go ahead and do it. No, I'm, I'm joking. No, it was, no, I do. Because you think about, look at what we have on the wall here. And some of the pictures that we have, of like, like you look at Dennis Edwards, I mean, that's just a, a candid shot. You know, we look at a lot of things that happened in the civil rights movement. If the photographers as artists then weren't documented, we wouldn't be able to see, have a visual to put with a struggle. You know, we see sometimes the dogs, we see the hoses, we can hear about that stuff. Um, it's almost, we, I, you can liken it to the story, you know, of Jesus. I mean, it was, it was when we saw the Passion of Christ and saw a visual with it, it made you really understand I mean, that's, that's really cold-blooded how you got treated, you know? Whether you believe in Jesus or not, I mean, it's a story that somebody documented, it's like, wow, you know? So I think this is important to take stuff um, and to document it. I, I'm in the process now when I do recording sessions, it's just as much as I can. Not make, try to not think that, well, try to think that every session I'm having could, could be that session that's really, really... Top or round moment during the process was seeing them bring the original uh horse the breaking carrier. This is Michael, I can't remember. But they brought that all the way from what do you follow? It was some very, very small town on the bottom skirts of Alabama. And they drove it all the way up to Huntsville with a reenactment scene so we can have it. That was like crazy. And you know, uh, we're saying friends like the award-winning artist here to be able to talk about his work is a blessing and we are so grateful. Um, Alan, uh, Chef Alan Noble, if you enjoyed the food today, give him a round of applause too. He, um, 